Greetings everyone and welcome back to Backpack Hero, a game I have been first tasting and streaming on and off for the past couple of months, honestly. It has finally reached its 1.0 release, that is right, it has exited early access, though it is still actively in development here and there. This is the sort of game where there is going to, I would very much expect to be a continuous stream of small tweaks and balances throughout the entire game's life. Now, with the release, we have a couple of new modes, but most importantly, the very, very eagerly anticipated story mode. And with story mode and the 1.0 release, I figured it was time to actually properly dive into this game for, at the very least, a mini-series. Now, if by the end of the episode you enjoyed what you saw and you want to see more, then do let me, and more importantly, say algorithmus no by clicking on some of those lovely buttons down below but uh, for this series we're going to at least have a couple of episodes so i can properly dive into the meat and bones of the story mode though a quick forward before i click on this lovely button you can still play the game as you did before you can jump into a quick game it's just going to be a, a nice fast easy dungeon dive so this can still be a 30 40 minute game for you if that's all you want but we're going to be focusing on the story mode and just seeing how orderia has changed in the deep dark dungeons beneath orderia a young pack rat searches for treasure there she discovers a mysterious relic okay not too much of, of an intro, but I, I think we'll get a little bit of a demo on how the, the game runs. Obviously, I know for the most part how to play the game, so uh, we might uh, skip fairly quickly through any uh, tutorial steps. Or at least as fast as the game will allow me to. Uh, add all items to your backpack to continue. While holding an item, use right-click to rotate it. There we go. And onwards to our first battle. In combat, you click items to use them. You must defeat all enemies to continue. That is fine. We will do our thing. Now, we want to try and uh, kill you way before you have time to do anything. So, there we go. We'll eat some of our dinner. There we are. Now, we can quickly level up. Uh, as a general rule, I like to maximize the edges as much as I can. Because there are some items later on where the amount of tiles in a column or in a row actually uh, matter. There are so many items and so much to discover. Sometimes it can be overwhelming, even for a backpack hero <laughs> like you and me. If you feel confused, bring up the context menu on an item and choose the option to view card. Oh, actually, that is a good bit of advice that I often forget. So you know what, game? Well played on that one. Uh, right, okay, so we've got one quite nice weapon there. Unfortunately, this is not the best setup. But this item here does uh, benefit from the length of the column. This one can hit all enemies for four damage. This one hits one enemy for seven. But as long as I'm fighting more than one enemy, that is actually better. Also, this one now takes it up to five damage because this is a floating accessory. Do I have anything else that I can fit in there? Uh, I don't. I don't want disgusting food. There are lots of new items. So at least for the first couple of episodes of this series, I expect that I'm going to be going a little bit more slowly, especially when I encounter something I'm not used to and I'm just hovering over it. And uh, so if you're new to the game as well, don't worry, I'm not going to be rushing through the mechanics of the game because there's enough here that has changed since early access for me to want to at least slow down enough to make sure I understand what's going on. The spaghetti. And one energy, ten block, and is then destroyed. Oh, I can't take any more items. Much sadness, of course. Yeah, I took... Uh, uh, all three uh, depending on the game mode and the difficulty which as far as I'm uh, aware in the story mode you can adjust with in-game mechanics like you can genuinely have easier runs or harder runs based purely on the on the way you you set up the overworld or, or your town oh my age has crept in around his snout you can see the white fur and shaggy edges from around his coat I'm getting out of the game he says if you have something to eat, I might as well give you my cleaver. I will trade food for a cleaver. I will trade you my half-eaten meal. There you go. Looks good to me, he says. You can't believe that he eats the whole thing without a moment's thought. Here you go, he says, and hands you his chef knife. I won't be needing this anymore. 
the retiring chef has given me the diamond cleaver. On use, deals two damage. When a cleaver kills a non-summoned enemy, plus one gold. Okay. Uh, cleavers are a weapon type that you actually build into a, a fairly large set. Like, you can have a cleaver run where the only types of weapons you have are cleavers, and they all kind of build off and synergize with each other. It's actually quite quite cool if you can make that happen. Uh, this is just some gold on the floor. Who goes around a dungeon and just leaves random piles of gold? I don't know. Right, okay, so we've got some enemies. All enemies have a little bit of a blurb for them. For the most part, it's fluff, but sometimes it actually does have in, um, useful information. So here you can see how much experience we'll get. If it's a summon, you tend not to get experience, and it will tend to tell you specifically that it is a summon, because some abilities in weapons won't work on summons. A smaller version of the rat wolves that patrol the upper layers of the dungeon. Uh, this is a little bee. These small bees are all drones of the queen. But it is angry. When attacked, it adds one rage. And rage will cause uh, an enemy to do more damage. The more stacks of rage, the more additional damage you do with each attack. Uh, so far, so normal for everyone. But we're going to uh, definitely benefit from using... Ah, see? I should have read that properly. Uh, if adjacent, a weapon is adjacent, minus three damage. That's a very bad move for me. Now, what I can do here is I'm going to block... Let them attack. Hopefully, yes. This turn, they're doing different things. You can see the enemy's intentions over their heads. By selecting it, you can learn even more. Right, so you're going to shield yourself up, and you're going to do nothing. So I'm going to use this turn to undo my silliness and move that around. Now, it takes all of my points to do that. It takes a, a full three points. Well, assuming you've actually got more than three points, then you should be able to do it multiple times. But that should allow this to do full damage again. So next turn will do a little bit more damage. However, you are going to be doing some damage, so I'm going to first get rid of the bee. Two, well, I'm not gonna have enough to get rid of you completely. This will give me seven. Well, I could take you out, and you are now a bigger threat than anything. I'll, I'll still take four damage, but that's fine. That's the price of my rushing and not uh, paying attention to the fact that the double halberd needs to not have another weapon nearby. But now, since there, there's nothing else going on here, I can just completely lay into you. Uh, you're going to do damage for eight, so I'll shield, so I take no more unnecessary hits. There we go, and then we'll just finish you off. There we are, nice and easy. You get another level up as well. Uh, right, at this point, let's expand things out so that we have a little bit more room to play with. There we go. Get items. Shimmy. Ooh, wow, okay, so we are getting some cleavers. We've got the heart cleaver. On use deals four damage. When a cleaver kills a non-summoned enemy, heals one HP. So these two are already going to synergize. When that one, when any cleaver kills an enemy, you get one gold. And when any cleaver kills an enemy, you gain one uh, HP. That's not bad at all, actually. But I also notice that we've got a tunic. Adjacent to diagonal armor gets plus one block, and each turn just adds five block passively. Uh, the helmet is armor, the shield is not, it is just a shield. This just adds 7 block, but it's something I can actively use, whereas these two just passively get used, but will give me a base level of block. This one is going to give me 5 block, because the 4 tiles below it, and the extra block from the tunic getting added in, this will give me 5 block. So every turn I'll just have 10 block to play with, which is actually quite nice. Uh, we don't want the toxic kunai, because the only place I can put it is there. And, well, I guess we could take the drink, or I could take more spaghetti. I think I'll take more spaghetti. There we go. Okay, we've got two enemies. Generally speaking, I will always go for fights over anything else, because you get both experience points and gold. Now, you're going to try and steal ten gold, you absolute scallywag. My lord, I don't need to use my shield at this point, because we're already generating enough, uh, enough shield passively to be able to completely absorb that. So, let's go ahead. How much damage will this do? Uh, these don't trigger each other. Some of the cleavers do. So, it's literally the highest damage I can do is four. But that's fine. I can bring you down to a point where I can hopefully take you out with a cleaver instead. Get a little bit of healing and also get a bit of cash as well. All right, that's my turn done. I could have used the spaghetti to get some more energy. Now, on this turn, you're going to run away. If you manage to run away, well, then that's it. I, I lose my money. Uh, when defeated, adds 10 gold, so I can get my gold back, but also power. Reactive, removed at the end of turn. When 6 damage is received, change intention to will not take any action. So, all I would need to do is do 6 damage, and you'll stop doing what you're about to do. And in this case, let's go ahead and... 
swamp you there. So now you're just gonna hold tight, but I'll just finish you off. There we go. Generated an extra gold and got a little bit of health besides. Now, at this point, I could just go ahead and gobble that down, but there's really no need to. The only uh, bad point about this is that I'm actually not going to do any damage. Just to, I'll do one point of damage, but, you know, for all intents and purposes, I did nothing. Now, this stage, if I wanted to, I could reorganize to get a small key. But I don't think uh, we need to worry about that. Honestly, just so I don't have to go through a whole other um, battle there, we used up our energy so I could hit him without the shield. Now, what do we got here? We've got some clubs. We've got so many shurikens. We've got lucky stars. Uh, now, these are used up. These are consumable, effectively. Um, deal five damage, but add luck. Luck gives you a chance of getting better equipment. When luck jet, um, rolls through, you'll notice that items will say that they are lucky items. So that just means that the rarity of the item got elevated because of your high luck at that point. Um, if you've played Backpack Battles, it's a similar deal to the the merchant's uh, the discount card where it actively upgrades an item in the, in the shop and it'll show you which one it upgraded. But given everything, I guess we're just going to take the Heart Ring. It gives us 5 maximum HP. That's fine. We'll take that and nothing else. Uh, you don't have to grab everything you see. Uh, very much like uh, any battler, sometimes it's actually better to not fill up your backpack. But uh, with certain characters, more is almost always better. It really does depend. Uh, right, in this mode, we're just going to unload on you. There we go. And we'll do exactly the same next time. We'll grab uh, some gold there. So first, we'll hit with a double halberd, then we'll follow up with a heart cleaver, and then we're going to follow up with a diamond cleaver. There you go. Uh, we'll easily be able to tank this. You are becoming a bit of a concern, though. So we're going to change the target of our next attack, because you're going to self-destruct for 29 damage if I don't kill you this turn. So let's just make sure that we do. There we go. And then next turn, uh, I won't quite take you out, unfortunately, but we'll get close. There we are. And finish you off. And the level up. Beautiful. Right, once again, going to expand this out as much as I can. Eventually, we're going to see something that, I, that, that uh, proves that this strategy wasn't a complete waste of time. Uh, right, a regular cleaver on you steals full damage. Well, I mean, I'll take it since we're stacking cleavers, but what we really want is a cleaver that activates other cleavers. Uh, when combat ends, plus three uh, health points. Always nice. Uh, additionally, I could pop that in there, and these two cleavers now do the same amount of damage as our double halberd does. It's just this one does it to all enemies. Uh, I can take one more item. I can either take the bandages. I don't want disgusting food. Uh, as combat ends, always heal a little bit. Or I could take the happy buckler. On use, adds five block, plus one to the energy cost of this for this combat. When attacked, minus one to the energy cost for this combat. So, every time I use it, it gets more expensive to use in the future. That doesn't sound great, but it's also tiny, so I'd be able to fit it in to a, a, quite a small space if I wanted to. I'm going to say no on that one. Uh, the Rough Whetstone on use, adjacent weapons gain plus three damage this turn. I mean, that might actually be even better there, but I'd have to use a point in order to do it. Uh, no, we're going to go with the bandages, I think, for this one. And then go and see what was in this trash chest. See if we want to upgrade anything. Okay, we've got a luck ring. That would always give us a little bit of luck for every combat. We've also got the bronze breastplate. Now, we've currently got the tunic which is giving us five block each turn and plus one block to the the leather cap. But the bronze blast plate gives us adjacent and diagonal armor, gets plus two block. This only gives two block itself, but adjacent weapons gain one damage. It does make it more useful for me. So let's shimmy things around a little bit. The diagonal there is quite nice. This is only going to care if a weapon is right next to it. It has to be adjacent. So as you can see, like like so. Uh, I can possibly... I do this. I could do something along these lines. These don't need to be proximate to it in any way. Uh, then we could have the luck ring. I could... 
that being said, I could just have these two in there if I really, really wanted to. Um, you do cause me quite a bit of trouble, you know. Uh, I could do something like that, I suppose. Uh, no. See, the thing with floats is it'll always push any items that aren't floating or anchored out of the way in order to always be at the top of the, of the area. Uh, so it's not the best for our present situation, if I'm honest. I mean, popping that in there might allow me to do quite a lot, because that's three extra damage on both of those. Uh, it's just a shame to lose the tunic. Realistically, if I wanted to go full tank, I could just pop that in there. I'd still be able to get the two cleavers down on that side as well. But instead, we're going to dump the shield, we're going to dump the tunic. Now, I am a little bit uh, at risk now, because in total, I'm only generating six block now instead of the the full 10 but i do have the potential to do a lot more damage we'll, we'll see how that plays out i believe the next area however is the final boss of this oh no actually we're only on part two i thought uh, i thought we'd already done two steps now this area is collapsing so i have to make a choice i either go for the experience points the gold uh sorry experience and a treasure or the gold over here we've got a question mark so it's going to be an event I can get a rarer item of the same type. Hmm. Your snout wiggles as you inhale a musky odor. Someone here is in need of a bath. You turn around and standing there is a rat. You never heard him come in. Let's make a trade, he says. I'll give you a rarer item of the same type. He chuckles. There are no guarantees. I mean, the guarantee is it is a rarer item of the same type, but it might not be a better item is the, uh, is the kicker there. Uh, sure, I'll... Get, let's go for a rare, rare cleaver. Okay. He takes the item and examines it. How's this for a trade? There's no time to say no. Okay, I got uh, nunchucks. I guess it just gave me a weapon. I was hoping that it would give me a cleaver. But uh, for each adjacent empty space, plus one damage to enemy. For each adjacent item, plus one damage to self. Oh. <laughs> what a terrible thing. Uh, also, the, the the shape is quite inconvenient. However, we do have a lot of empty space that I could play around with. Uh, okay, well, if I pop that over there, this now does 16 damage to a single opponent. It is quite, quite beautiful. I did trade off my, uh, my very rare cleaver for that, though, which is a little bit of a pain. Uh, what do I want to take with me? Will that reduce it? Oh, thank goodness. It is only adjacency. So I only have to worry about four slots. Let's go ahead and pop that up there. I could shimmy you down here. I mean, it's not great, but it will work. All right, well, we've changed our design, uh, our setup quite aggressively at this point. All right, I'm going to go for the treasure chest and the experience points, mostly for the experience points, if I'm honest. Um, I don't... Well, I mean, you're doing six, but realistically, I'm never gonna... Uh, at this point, the, the cleavers are almost completely secondary to me. Um, I very much doubt I'm ever going to go for a cleaver attack instead of this. Uh, that'll do. I think we've got a key, so if we come acro across a locked chest, we can get in there. And a little bit of experience points. We're eight out of 50. Okay. So two opponents, we've got red snail, strawberry flavor. Um, to my knowledge, that is not how snails work, but who am I to argue, I suppose? All right, let's go ahead and just plomp down the damage. We'll just take you out of running straight away. We will take one point of damage, but that's okay. I should have checked how much uh, life I had left right at the end there. Uh, I would finish you off completely. But I can, in one turn, take out that. Okay, I'm going to do this strategically so I can heal a little bit. In one hit, I will completely negate your armor. And then finish you off with this. Gain a bit of healing and a bit of extra healing with the, uh, the, the bandages. And there we are. That was the effect of our lucky ring. An item upgraded in rarity. Uh, we've got the cutting board. When an adjacent consumable is used, adds four block. Hmm, okay. Um, we've also got the club. Deals nine damage to a single opponent, but adds three weak to that enemy, which reduces their incoming damage, but gets more expensive to use each turn. 
And then the potted plant. On use, heals six hit points, removes five poison, and is destroyed. Uh, honestly, I'm actually more in favor of getting rid of the heart ring and having healing and having a second leather cap. Just to start stacking a little bit more block at all times. So we're now getting 6 plus 5, so we're now up to 13. Uh, 13 blocks. So we're better than we were before. So I'm actually quite happy with that. I'll keep the key. I'll keep the, the lucky ring. I'm almost tempted to get rid of the key, but I think we'll hold on to it for now. Right, we've got an unknown event as well. Another rat. Uh, what are you trading? His cloak billows as he steps out from the shadows. We can make a trade, you and I, he says. You know risks are involved. Get a different item of the same rarity. No, no. I'm not going to be doing that one. If it was a, a, a higher rarity, I might go for it. Uh, we didn't actually need the healing. That was a very, very useless pick. I forgot that I'd dropped the uh, max health, and by the time I, I realized what I was about to do, and the ridiculousness of it, it was too late. Right, you're going to be a problem already. Um, I guess I'm just going to take you out. I don't need the healing, to be fair, so I, I suppose there's no real reason to worry about it. Uh, we've got a rabbit here. The rabbit knows you are its garden. Uh, are in its garden. You are. Uh, okay. My mind was going somewhere else with that. Uh, rabbits. <laughs> rabbits will eat other animals. That everyone thinks, oh, rabbits are, are herbivores. <laughs> uh, tell me you haven't ever kept a rabbit without telling me you haven't ever kept a rabbit. <laughs> uh, they are herbivores, by the way. It's just they have a very loose definition of what is plant. Uh, we've got thread. Adjacent and diagonal armor gets plus one block. Hmm. That would be a very nice one to go for. The more armor I can get it adjacent to, the better the return, however. I think... Okay, so I'm going to lose three block here. This is just going to go up to... Uh, sorry, two block from that one, I, I should say. Popping that one in here, though, both of these now get a good uh, upgrade. So overall, this is much... Oh, actually, it's, it's exactly the same. I've got 13, so I'm not gaining anything by doing that. If I pop you back there, I'm only gaining a little tiny bit. Mm, still, we might, on our next level up, be able to put that into a much better position. So I think I'll keep it. Uh, we do lose the key. In before, there is now a chest that I can't get into. Oh, hello. You do quite a lot of damage. Um, that's worrisome. But it's fine. I will be able to absorb it all. I'm not going to let you steal any of my gold. You absolute scoundrel, you. There we go. I've worked hard to save up this gold. Oh, my good lord. Okay, I've got to do 14 damage, and this will change his intention to uh, 5 to 6 block from a 25 smash. Uh, rumor has it that gerbils used to be pets before the founding of Ordaria. These overgrown monsters make you doubt it. How dare you. My pet gerbil was lovely. Right. Okay, we've got uh, another cleaver. We can get the cleavers back. Another bronze brass plate. Uh, a tilted sword. Deals seven damage, but each turn gets more powerful. Okay, fair enough. Uh, I can see where you're going with this game. Uh, I could even put that in there, but there's no reason to when this starts out at doing 16. Uh, there's nothing here that I want. I'm going to say no. That being said, there was a shop just down here, but I know that the third level of each area, and we know we're on crypt level two, is a boss, so I don't really expect that we're going to be uh, doing much more fighting here. What have we got? We've got the Spade Cleaver. When a cleaver kills a non summoned enemy, this gains one more damage that combat. We've had quite a lot of cleavers, interestingly. The Metallic Mask. This is a legendary item. On take damage, adds one dodge to self. Fair. If I'd gotten one more point of experience, just the one, I would have been able to expand the backpack out a little bit more. But oh well. Uh, this adds one spike to self. And at this point, since I'm not going to be seeing another battle, I may as well take it, as this will give me the ability to... Uh, oh, actually, is this considered armor? It is. I wonder if this would mean that this armor would start adding block, even though normally it wouldn't. 
I mean, I wouldn't get any benefit from height, but maybe this would be a better one there. You know what? We've got enough money to play around with it, Sean. Yeah, each turn adds one block. Okay. Uh, I will get rid of the thorns then. I'll, I'll just sell those back to you. Uh, you can have the ring. You can have... Oh, no. You just took the thorns back. I, it's as if I didn't make the purchase. Nice. You're not one of these mer merchants that's like, Oh, you've bought that off me now. No, no. No take backsies. However, I will buy it back from you at one-tenth the price. Uh, well done. You can always trust a toad. The Crypt Finale. Wait a second. I recognize that. It's my mum's lost locket. I could have a clue about where she is. I guess. What? This is property of King. Not the King of King. King's Thug. That's mine. All items in the dungeon belong to him. If you want it, you'll have to fight me for it. King's Captain. His face looks familiar. Okay. Uh, right, well, let's just wallop you down. I'm already blocking more damage than you can do. There we go. And there we get our level up. You win, but we don't really do anything with, with the win, sadly. I will take this, but uh, for the sake of it, sure. Uh, let's grab those three spaces. Done. Gonna shimmy these around. Now we get stupendous amounts of block. I greatly approve. And we're not messing up with our with our weapon. But with that, we're done with this first run. We get some cheese. We head up. Okay, now the cheese, I believe, is uh, purely for use in the town. All right. By Anna's Quills. Purse, there you are. I love the names of all the protagonists, by the way, because they are all names in some way or another that reference a bag. Why were you gone for so long? Uh, well, I'm not gonna lie. I was in the dungeon. We talked about this. You promised to only stay near the entrance. I found this amazing backpack in there. It let me explore deeper and bring more stuff back than ever before. Besides, we won't be able to rebuild the town with what we can find laying in the woods. That may be. But do I need to remind you how dangerous it is in there? I remember. I know it's dangerous. But someone needs to do something. Maybe I can finally make a difference. There's bandits, Kingsguard, and who knows what else. Still, Dad, someone needs to do something. It's what Mum would do. Your Mum would also know to be more careful. Um... The risk is worth it. The danger is worth it. It's our best shot to put some life back into this town. I suppose there's no convincing you. Just promise me you'll be careful, Purse. Dad, I found something in the dungeon. I think it's Mum's locket. I saw one of King's captains down there. I think he might have been there the day Mum was taken. Let me see that. Okay. This was your mother's locket. I recognize it, of course. She found this in the dungeon. She always claimed it was magic and was the source of her luck down there. I remember she had some way of opening this thing, but it was always a challenge for me. Dang it! I can't get this thing! Come back to me next time you're around. I'll figure it out. Dang, the locket. Okay, we've got a couple of other quests to do. You look rough. Did you fall for the old hermit crab in the treasure chest trick? Uh, um... I... I I don't know how to read that. I just came back from the dungeon. I, I figured. I always know you go, uh, you've gone down there when old Louis starts pr uh, pacing by the entrance of the town. I hate to worry him, but there are so many things down there that can help rebuild the town. But the dungeon keeps shifting, and I can't get deep enough. It is tricky down there. It took my brother Baz years to make any progress in his explorations. I don't know how my mum did it. Yeah, that Prada was something special. I sure do miss it, Prada. P oh, my lord. Anyway, did you find anything good to sell down there? I found this magic backpack. It lets me carry lots of stuff. How about the backpack? Is that for sale? No way. This backpack lets me carry all sorts of stuff back. Mm. Well, if you bring back more stuff, we can scrap it and sell it. If only we had a store to sell it at. Why don't you remove the old store? We can get some resources from there. 
Follow me and I'll show you where it is. Ha ha! Town management tutorial time. Destroy the old store. Destroy. Kachunk. We'll get five building materials, five treasure, and five food. Wow, you sure scrapped that store quickly. Here's a blueprint for a new one. Could you make it? I'm sure I can. Commercial building. Sell items here. Gain resources to expand Haversack Hill. I love the names of this game. They are so cheesy. Uh, also, I'm a brat. Um, so, I mean, that, that. no wonder I love it. But uh, come on. <laughs> it's great. As much as it makes me groan, and I'm sure it makes some of you groan too. You've also got to admit it. You do kind of like it a bit. For each commercial decoration nearby, plus 5% of efficiency. It will take you a few, a few resources to build, but... You got a few when you scrapped the old store. You should set up the new store now. Well, it takes barely any resources. Uh, do I want to pop this right next to the... End? Oh, I can't. Oh, much sadness. Um, I suppose I can pop it up there. This way I can just go straight to the store when I come in. Oh, that being said. Uh, how about a waterfront store? That'll get some customers in. Tell us how you built the new store. I built a store. When I said you should build a store, I meant over the next few weeks. How do you do it so fast? There's this backpack I found. I can lift, move, carry, and organize anything, even buildings. This changes everything. With what you can do now, I think we could really rebuild Haversack Hill. I'll start setting up the store as a trading post. You should head back to the dungeon to find more supplies. That backpack is something else. It truly is. All right, so Haversack Hill, definitely seen better days. Uh, can I destroy anything? That requires 30 peeps to destroy. This requires 25. Is there anything I can destroy? 20, 20, 20. Okay, looks like we're not breaking anything down for a while. Okay, fair enough. That'll do. Okay, let's go ahead and check out the store. Now, from what I understand, the are some items you don't want to sell, but the ones you don't want to sell, you can't. And you... And you don't take these items back into the dungeon with you, I don't think. I think whenever you return to the town, you basically offload everything you got from the dungeon, and every run starts fresh with a couple of fresh items. Um, so we want to sell this. Sells for 25 extra food in Haversack Hill. It is unique. And 25 treasure. Nice. Ah, that's what efficiency will affect. It'll affect the, the overall price we get. Uh, sell you as well. I can only imagine legendary items get me more. Uh, we're going to sell everything. We'll just see what we get in the end. 53, 28, and 53. Not bad at all. I will accept. Okay, have a kill. It's getting a couple of odds and sorts. All right, we're 30 minutes. You know what? I think we've got a, another dungeon run in us. Sure. We're going with purse. You do still have all of the characters, but you have to unlock them, uh, I believe, through just the, the various shenanigans in the dungeon. A peppy rat from a poor village in Oakshire Forest. She aims to storm the dungeon, rebuild her village, and save her family. All right, well, uh, the current quest, standard run, basic run with no special settings. We'll get another cheese at the end of it. All right, we might go a little bit faster this time. Obviously, you've uh, seen the beginning, so let's just get in there. Straight into a fight. Uh, okay, well, I do need to take you out quite badly, but I also don't want to leave you around. So I'm just going to gobble down my food and start laying into these enemies as quickly as I'm able to. Make sure that I can take you out next turn. And I should also be able to block any incoming damage. There we go. And just finish you off. There we are. Now I'll wait for the next turn. And just spend all my points when you don't have any uh, protection and then when you do spend my points on defending i mean there's no well no i basically just take away your shield and that's going to go at the end of the turn anyway now i'll just finish that off and level up once again want to try and maximize a full column and then start working on rows oh i got a second level straight away as well uh, in that case, going to... Well, I'm going to space these out a little bit more this time. There we go. Oh, uh, new shield, new hat straight away. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, this also counts as a shield. Adds 12 block and adds 3 burn to self. Okay, let's have a look at the card. So, burn. will take X damage at the start of the turn. This can be blocked. So, it would do 3 
burn to myself. So effectively, I'm only adding nine block. And then at the end of my turn, that nine block is gone. And then I'll have still two burn to find some way of blocking. So not really the best, best choice there. But down here, the tragic, the uh, tragic comedy shield. On use at eight block. That's better than the shield and it's smaller. However, you can transform this one. That uh, symbol there means you can transform it, but you choose when to do it. I don't believe it costs anything to do. On take damage adds 11 block. So I can flip it around so that if I take any damage at all, I add 11 block. But that will only last for the next turn. I think I prefer this. But let's go ahead and uh, slide you in there. Okay, we've got a stick of dynamite. We've got a ring to take you. We've also got a poison whetstone. Can be used one time each turn. Adds one poison to self and three poison to an enemy. Poison will take X damage at the end of the turn, but that goes straight to your character, I believe. I think that was a more important one to pick up. Uh, I, I don't think that can be blocked. Uh, the damage knife will just wear down over time. I guess I'll keep that since, um, you know, there's no reason not to for the second. Uh, we've got a fight down there, or we've got a treasure chest and some healing. Mm, I think we're going to go for the fight. Ah, hope you aren't too hungry. Uh, you want food for Cleaver. Uh, sadly, I don't have food right now, so I'm going to have to say no thanks. You turn to leave. Sure you won't change your mind? Uh, if I find food, by all means. Okay, so we've got the small rat wolf, the little bee, but also lucky wraith. Windfall. When defeated, adds great luck. You will get three experience for defeating this enemy. Rabbit's luck is in their feet and in their souls. A uh, bit grim, but okay. All right, well, given this, uh, you're not going to do anything this turn. Uh, I've got nine damage incoming, so I will use one turn to add some block, but then I'm just going to lay into you for now. Thing is, this adds weapons in this road gain three poison for the rest of the combat. You're going to run away unless I can kill you this turn. Uh, which I can do, but I have to then tank three damage, and I'm going to have to accept a curse. I'll do it. There we go. Uh, great luck is worth it right now, this early in a run. And in turn, some enemies will create hazards, forcing you to add them to your backpack. They can be placed in any empty space or on top of items. Now, this has changed from the way it was uh, uh, at least several versions ago in the early access, where curses were physical tokens that you have to make space for in your backpack or throw something out in order to make space for. Uh, curses are now a very different thing. Uh, and, and hazards are separate to curses. There, there's, there's this weird overlap, but they have now become two distinct items. Be careful where you place them. These special items have negative effects and any item that is completely covered by hazards will be disabled. Hazards will be removed at the end of combat, if you survive. We've got a sticky, on use, destroyed. When your turn ends, items behind are anchored for two combats. Um, two combats, not turns. So it means I wouldn't be able to reorganize no matter what. Right, you're the only one that's uh, about to do some damage. I'm going to tank a little bit of poison in order to do a bit of poison. And then I'm going to shield. Now this poison there will take three damage at the end of their turn. And I took one damage again, not blocked. Now you're going to try and hit me with some more honey at this point. I do need to block again. However, I can smack you, take you out completely, get a block in, and then start tack, um, stacking up the poison. The nice thing with poison is poison will go through a shield. Even though I did no health damage, I still applied the poison. So even one use of this early on is completely justified because that builds up the poison very, very quickly. And once poison is higher than health, it changes their action to poison sickness. They can't take any action, but allow the poison to kill them. Um, so it's a bit grim when you think about it. And because we had nothing under there, we didn't need to worry about getting rid of that throughout the fight. Oh my lord, really? Okay, so that's what Great Luck just did. It just upgraded four items for us. A Whisper's Etching. This item will have a use in Haversack Hill, so that's an automatic take. When a diagonal shield is used, adds one block. I could put that up there. 
because technically this is diagonal to it, even though it's also orthogonal. Now, the earth stone blade. This item is heavy. For each row below, plus three damage. It's also four items long. Does that matter based on its orientation? Rocket on use moves forward until stopped. When destroyed, deals zero damage to all enemies. When this finishes moving, destroyed. When this moves, permanent plus 10 damage. Now, there are objects in this game which can manipulate other objects position in your backpack. And I'm just, it just occurred to me that you can have a rocket with space to be able to move forward and then an object that is always pulling it or uh, back or an object ahead of it that's always pushing it back. So it never actually leaves. It's just p continually moving, gaining permanent damage until eventually at the end of your run, you come up against the boss and you reorganize to make sure that there isn't a the blocker anymore and just let it finish its travel. And then suddenly the boss gets absolutely obliterated by stupendous amounts of damage in the first turn. What an interesting build that would be. Maybe we will see something like that in the future. But let's let's have a look if I can finagle this. Yeah, yeah, because that row is below it. Hmm. I guess then if I were to put two spaces up there and slide this up here, this would gain enormous amounts of damage. That would be very, very nice. Or if I can use other heavy objects, because a heavy object, much like a floating object, will always sink. If there is an object in the way, it'll get pushed out of the way. However, the beauty with heavy objects is that if there is a, a heavy object in the way, it can't push that out of the way, or an anchored object. So you will be able to just stack them up. You might have to make a pillar, but uh, it would work. I can't take any more items, and there's really nothing else I would want to take. I guess I'll have that one in there just for the sake of it, but there's no reason why I wouldn't use this, because it does more damage. All right, that's good enough for me. All right, we've got a fight over here for us to go and play around with. Hello. Got a sparrow knave. Protect your head! Wow. Uh, okay, well, I think we're going to... Oh, damn it, it's only in this row. Oh, that's a shame. I should have replaced, but moved those around. Well, sadness. I'm going to use it. Grab some block. It's, I'm going to double block for this one. I'm just going to take this turn. This is now a better weapon than this one for the time being. Oh, you're going to use uh, hazard. This item floats. When your turn ends, create static in spaces below. On use, hurt. Deal two damage to self. Ooh, I guess that would happen there then I suppose okay well there's no damage coming to me this turn so I'm just going to take you out so I don't have to deal with that problem but I really should have noticed that that said row and not uh, adjacent that was very much my fault let's uh, stack up the poison here and really stack up the poison and that's game over for you there we go. There's our level up. Um, realistically, if I can do that, that, why not, I suppose? Sure. You win. I did. So this is now going to go up there. You can move down here and that can go up beside it. Right, what have we got? Oh my god. <laughs> a mechanized toy. Very well. A uh, meal, a key, a sapphire. Uh, that floats. If I do that, oh wait, no, because this is heavy, it can't push it out of the way. Interesting. Okay, that because that is an adjacent one. So this is now doing nine, uh, sorry, 15 damage, all told. If I moved it across by one, it would now do 17 damage because there's one extra row below it. So we're up to 18 damage with this now, potentially also poisoned. I can take two more items. What's this me mechanized toy then? can be used one time each combat. Adds three rage for each space the destroyed items occupy. On use, adds one rage to self. Items this is played on are destroyed. Let me have a look at your card. 
This means to use this item, move it in combat. Right. So I, if I had something I was happy to get rid of, then this would allow me to stack rage. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, at that point, uh, having large space occupying items makes sense, but it it would need to be able to move all the way over this. It's kind of a pain. Uh, I suppose we could play around with it, though. Sure, we'll see how this goes. The Leaving the key behind is always a bit of a worry, but we'll see. All right, let's move up. And on to the second level of the crypt. Part two of three. Right, we'll go and check out what this event is. Do I want gold or experience? Always experience. Hark! You are greeted by a member of the patrol. The squirrel looks at you absent-mindedly. Long ago I retired from the patrol, he says. Now I spend my days adventuring and reliving my glory days. I don't need much of my old equipment anymore. Can I interest you in something? Uh, I'll take a shield because shields tend to be nice and big. From beneath his bushy tail, he pulls a shield. This may protect you. Remember, loot is only valuable if you make it back alive. That is fair. Uh, ooh, shove shield. And seven block pushes the frontmost enemy to the... Oh. Are there positional mechanics now? Do some enemies not have any... Like, have different attacks? Or are they unable to attack if they're not in the front? Hmm. I know there is at least one enemy type that will shield uh, enemies behind it. I'm always going to go for the experience over here, so let's go grab that. And so in that case, pushing them behind who they were shielding would make sense. Uh, I've got a hard hat, we've got a poison star, we've got a poison potion. Uh, nothing there really jumps out to me as something amazing. Yeah. The the dice is useful in that it allows you to re-roll the rewards you're about to get. Right, you're going to use a fire hazard, you're just going to apply basic burn. Right, I want to pop you here. We've now got 16 rage. You are now doing 34 <laughs> I don't even need to give you poison. <laughs> it was bonkers. Well, that already paid for itself. Uh, oh, and we've got dog etchings. Okay, I'll take that as well. I'll grab a uh, tunic. Don't need it. I'm going to immediately destroy it in order to get the power uh, on my sword there, but sure. Hello. We're up against a vole. Voles are notorious for walking off with anything that isn't nailed down. Fair enough. Also, I realized I didn't read the, uh, the text of the other one. Let's That's fine. 13 rage. I still do 31 damage. I won't actually kill you. Interesting. Um, well, given that, then, I'm going to get a little bit of poison. I'm going to clobber you. You will now uh, die off. You're not going to be able to get through my shield as is, so I'm just going to stack that up now the rage that will decrease by one per turn so we've massively powered up this earthstone blade for a while a little bit of uh, poison damage there and finish you off and again there we go all right what items have we got uh, see you're a bit of a pain um we've got citrine adjacent weapons below get plus three damage that isn't useful for me then um Honestly, one thing I could do is this. I'd still move up there and melt that. So that's probably the best option for me. Got a shop. And we've also got a fight. So we're going to go here first. Right, we've got a uh, gremlin. If you lost something small, he's probably taking it. Uh, but it's wealthy. I'll get five gold if we defeat it. We've also got a porcupine. Porcupines are usually friendly creatures. Something horrible must have happened to her. Uh, she's going to heal the whole group for 10 damage. We don't want that. We've also got a muskrat brigand. Tiny spiny. They'll kick you in your face. <laughs> yeah. Cowardly. We'll flee if only cowardly enemies remain. So I want to take you out. If you flee, I don't get points for it. Which is not something I want to see. Right. We are now doing how much damage? 31. You're gone. Got eight damage incoming, so I'm going to take you out, and then I'm going to pop my shield to be able to tank that. It's fine. We're still doing uh, 30 damage, so you're gone in one hit, and you're gone in two. 
And we gotta level up. Perfect. Right, where do we want to put all of these points? Uh, we've only got three spaces to unlock, so I'm going to say something along these lines. There we go. That'll do for now, I think. Done. Right, with that, I can shimmy around a couple of my items to make space. Ah, here we are. There's a, a brick, which is heavy. Again, you can place that in here, and this would be held up. In fact, I'll quickly demonstrate that. It can't fall down because that's heavy, but the moment I take it away, it collapses. Alright, uh, we've got a flower. Add 8 haste to self. Haste will allow you to gain additional block when you block. Think of it as dexterity from Slay the Spire. And weak reduces X damage on the opponent. All status effects go down by one each turn in this game. At this point, I could afford to take a key, but what I really need to do is make sure that I've got enough stuff to be able to melt it with my uh, mechanized toy. Uh, you know what? Three is fine. I'll bring a key along. It's been a while. I could take the dice. Actually, I will take the dice. Because there is a... I get the impression that not many people realize that in all the ways you can use a dice. But want to see what I have today. I do. What have we got? We've got the Jagged Blade. It's another four blade, but uh, this one isn't great. On kill, deals eight damage to all enemies. That's not bad if you're in a big group fight. Uh, we've got a, another helmet. We've got a Peridot. Adjacent weapons get plus one poison, but also lose one damage. Well, that's actually not bad. Hmm... No, I think we'll keep that one. Uh, got another sapphire that I could pop in if I really, really wanted to, but I don't. Um, the rose isn't terrible. But what we can do is the way the, the dice rolls, re-roll your combat rewards. Oh, is it only combat rewards? Let's have a look. Oh, they have changed it only combat rewards. It used to be that you could re-roll a shop's inventory. Wow. Now, don't I feel suddenly, ha, ah, most people don't know you can do this. You can't. Oh, that's why most people don't know. <laughs> but you could you used to be able to damn it uh oh well but uh it's only value of three the the value is based entirely on the rarity don't worry when looking at items trying to puzzle out which one is going to be worth more it is entirely based on rarity um given that then i could just use this to gain a little bit extra oomph for my mechanical toy and gain a uh, rose of thorns in order to make me a little bit more dangerous to attack Right. Onwards to the fi uh, the finale. And the end of the episode, I'm sad to say. Hello. Why? Why is the ferret going to be the bad? What? Game, am I on the right side? Because I've got a feeling that whatever side the ferret is on is the right side. Why are you going to make me fight ferrets, game? <sighs> He'd be kind of cute if he wasn't such a violent person. Ferris aren't violent. They just talk with their teeth, okay? It all depends on how you bring them up. I'm sure he's lovely if you get to know him. All right, well, the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to melt all of that. There we go. 16 rage. Uh, you're going to get through my shield, though, which is a problem. I'll tank one damage. It's fine. Also, I'm going to start stacking up poison. There we go. A nice... Early hit there. Lots of damage. 33 damage in one hit. You know what, though? Since this is going to be a bit of a longer fight, you're going to summon a minion in a moment. I'm going to stack a little bit more poison. There we And at this point, the next hit is going to take you out. Right, I could reorganize at this point. If I wanted to spend three uh, energy to reorganize, I could get the spiked helmet. Don't need it. Uh, the rabbit. The rabbit knows you are in its garden. It is cowardly, though, because it's a summon. And the fact that it says this enemy is a summon does have quite far-reaching effects on the things that you can do with your other attacks. Always pay attention to whether something is a summon or not. Quite, for, for example, some things that will heal you, they'll only do it if you use, like, uh, they'll heal you for, like, killing something, will typically only do so if you kill the non-summon. So you can't end up with a... Uh, a set of equipment that will mean you're basically immortal as long as the other person is summoning ads. It isn't that kind of game. But there we go. We have won. And by winning, we can go and grab the cheese. 
the most important of all things. All right, let's head back to Haversack Hill. And I'll wrap up the episode there. Uh, we've got a couple of peeps to uh, go and chat with, but that's going to have to wait until the next episode. I really do hope you've enjoyed this one, and I hope those of you who are familiar with the early access have enjoyed a glimpse into what has changed, especially with the overworld. There is a lot more to the game now if you want to play in story mode, but as I mentioned at the very beginning of the episode, if all you want from Backpack Hero is what you had in early access that is still there as well so uh there's a lot to this game whether you just want to sit down for 30 minutes and just smash out one dungeon without any kind of progress or, or any any worries about having to do quests and such you can absolutely do that or you can uh, play through build a village start managing your citizens and piece by piece uncover clues as to what happened to your mother and perhaps restore order to Orderia. But that is going to be it for me. I really do hope you've enjoyed. I hope to see you in the next. But until next time, do take care, everyone.